that's pretty much uh, it was um, I'd been I'd been wanting to play the guitar but it was in those days in the 50s there was nobody you know you couldn't you know everybody plays guitar over here now and in North America and there's a guitar teacher on every corner they're probably probably the same in Australia but in the 50s uh, you know very few people played guitar and uh, there was a certain, you know, certain uh, status or cachet to, to being able to play, but you had to find somebody to teach you, and uh, so that was, that was a long, hard process. But uh, but uh, this kid in the next the bed, we were in a broken leg ward, and uh, this kid in the next bed, he had a guitar, and so we were trying to learn how to play. I walked the line. Johnny Cash had just brought us. First, you know, first monster song, and was I walked the line, and yeah, that's how it started. And and um, uh, he went on to become a a, do a doctor, and and I uh, went on to become a guitar picker. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a, a a strong interest in music before then? Um, just a, a kind of a. Yeah, I, I liked I liked music a lot. I I never I never uh, had any concept of becoming a professional, you know, a singer or a singer songwriter entertainer. I, I mean that was uh, kind of unheard of at the time. But uh, uh, I did like music a lot, and and uh, the guys, a couple of guys I hung around with in school, and that was boarding school. Uh, they, you know, we we shared an interest in the in the pop music of the time, but also in country music that was really happening, and and, and a lot of jazz too. We listened to a lot of jazz. Of course, it was all on, uh, you know, seventy eight RPM uh, uh, records, and you know, just very very soon after that, the uh, the long play album appeared. You know, and that was a, that was a big deal. Because you could, you know, music was becoming, you know, recorded music was becoming uh, more accessible and, and you know, and therefore more eclectic, you know. And you see, in the 50, early 50s, it was pretty, uh, you know, it was... Uh, it was uh, something that you had to wor work hard to get to, get to, you know, to get at. But I think that, I think in a way, that kind of made it even more special, you know. Mm. How, how difficult was it in the early days for a Canadian artist to, to gain recognition outside of Canada? Well, uh, it wasn't that difficult, I think. Uh, uh, I think a lot of the Lesbian, probably a lot of written about that, but I, you know, it was the border wasn't uh, difficult in those days, like like it is now. I mean, you know, it's uh, there, it's uh, it's it's really the border has become almost you know a very awkward, difficult situation. But but in those days, you could go and and uh, I was singing with a young lady by the name of Sylvia Fricker, and we. Um, we were had a folk duo, and we just went down to New York and sat in at the at the uh, Gertie's. Uh, it was a, a bar called Gertie's. Uh, and on Monday nights, they had uh, I think it was Monday nights. They had a, you know a kind of a, a jam session, a kind of a hoot nanny they called it, and and um, it was kind of an open mic, and you could you could uh, wait your turn and. And have a go at it, and uh, we did, and they seemed to like what we were doing, mm. and uh, we were just, uh, you know, fresh from the coffee houses of, of uh, Toronto. I mean, we'd only been doing it for about a year, so mm. it was all pretty new and, and uh, moving pretty fast. But uh, and from that, we, we got signed to a record deal and uh, and started making. Uh, Making those albums for uh, Vanguard. Of course, you were you were managed by Albert Grossman there for a while, who's a, a, a legendary figure in folk music circles. How did you find him to deal with? Oh, well, I, I, we liked Albert very much, and I, I think there were there were a lot of times when Albert didn't quite know what to do with us. It, it was he couldn't package us like he packaged uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Uh, we kind of didn't fit the mold too much, but uh, 
And we were also uh, we were also pretty apolitical, being Canadians, and we couldn't uh, relate to a lot of the stuff that was going on, uh, the socialist stuff that was going on in New York City. But but uh, the the colleges uh, colleges liked us a lot, and then we started playing uh, playing that the college circuit in the East, and uh, and we were very successful at it for a couple of years, and uh, it uh, you know it was a different. Uh, it was a very different place in time, you know, and, and uh, uh, air travel was uh, completely different, and and uh, your guitars uh, might might make it, you know, might make the flight or not, or might arrive, you know, beat up, and and that sort of thing you had to contend with. But it was, uh, you know, it was just a more uh, it, uh, uh, kind of a more innocent time in, in its own way, you know. Mm. Sound systems were poor. Uh, often you play in a, you know, in a, you might play in a theater at a college, but you might play in a gymnasium or something like that, you know. And uh, But we, we had a, a cult, this cult following developed, and, and we had a couple of, you know, big, big years. And then uh, we started drifting more into, into contemporary country music, you know, country rock and and hit it that way and uh, changed everything. And the Beatles were, had arrived by, at that point, and they really, they really shook things up. Of course. Mm, of course. Were you under much pressure at all from from record company to, as a duo, to take a, a, a more commercial musical path at any time? No, not really. Uh, no, they didn't. Uh, we would we would bring uh, material for a new album, and. Um, and they they, uh, they they accepted what we what we would come up with. We were we were writing uh, everything at that that point in time. A lot of our music was traditional, you know, uh, public domain traditional stuff. And uh, uh, no, they, we we didn't have any uh, really any pressure to, uh, which was maybe too bad in a way because we we didn't really know what we were doing. We could have used a good a really good producer, but we never did. Uh, we never did hook up with one at that at that point. Now, one of your most famous songs, of course, is Four Strong Winds." Do you recall much about the the writing process of, of that song? Well, yeah, I've been asked that question many, many times, <laughs> and uh, so um, and so, yeah, I remember it distinctly. But uh, uh, you know, the, the the memory plays tricks on you. And uh, yeah, I remember the afternoon I wrote it. I, I I asked Albert Grossman if I could use his apartment because he's the only one he's the only one that had an apartment and uh, because I'd heard Bob Dylan sing uh, he sang a song for me uh, in the in the bar the kettle of fish the previous uh, evening and I thought to myself well I could do that and uh, little did I know but uh, I Albert gave me the key to his apartment I went over there it was a an autumn, autumn, rainy autumn afternoon, and and uh, and uh, it took me about a half an hour, and I wrote it. I believe the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation recently voted it what the most important Canadian, the greatest Canadian song of the twentieth century. Is that right? Well, they they didn't they didn't vote. It. They, they everybody uh, the listeners voted. Oh, on okay, it. yeah, and they have. They had a big, big, big contest tonight, and it came down to um, it. You know, it, I didn't even know it made the finals. Uh, you know, and uh, I was riding a, a young horse, a colt, uh, a bronc up in my up in my round ten on, in the afternoon, and I had I had the radio on because I thought something was going on, and uh, listening to the the national broad, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and and I had it on my truck radio with the window the wind was blowing so hard I could hardly hear it it's funny I got down to the top 10 then the top 5 and and I thought oh well I, I didn't make the cut I'm not in there and um uh, and then when they did play the number one song and it was Four Strong Winds, I, I damn near fell off this horse. It was <laughs> cold I was riding. But uh, uh, one of the, actually, uh, it, it was, there was a, a strange thing happened. There'd been a, uh, four, four uh, Mounties, you, you know, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, four young Mounties got murdered, shot by a gunman up north. 
about a month before that, and I had I had been asked by the Mounties to sing at their uh, memorial service, and I agreed to do that. And they wanted to know if I'd sing Four Strong Winds, and I said I would. And I it was a and I gave a very emotional uh, very emotional reading of the song. And unbeknownst to me, it was televised, and uh, and uh, it was you know there was a lot of public reaction to it, you know, and I think that's what I think that's what in the last few days of the the voting, I think uh, you know a lot of people uh, were had you know were plugged into that emotional performance on on television they saw, and. Uh, but uh, that's my that's my theory anyway. Yeah, want we'll to talk about the the great speckled bird. That those recordings really, well, they stand the test of time. They really stand up well today. How did that outfit came together? It's a, it was a real pioneering outfit in terms of uh, of fusing con- country music and rock music, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you know, there, it was it was starting to happen, and it was the, you know, the, the, the few, you know, they have on guard, I guess, and and we, you know, the birds were were drifting toward, you know, they were, they were doing that, and and uh, burrito, you know, the burrito brothers, and and uh, and, uh, and those guys, uh, so um, you know, it was happening on 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 the west coast and and also back east, but we. Uh, I just I knew some players that could really uh, could really make the transition, could really play this stuff, and uh, uh, and so I, I formed uh, I formed the band, and uh, we had you know I found an outstanding young steel player who who's still around, and I still we're still good friends, Buddy Cage, and I put him together with uh, with. Uh, Amos Garrett, who who went on to become a, quite a legendary uh, lead guitar player, and, and, and we first, and you know we were all pretty uh, pretty eclectic in our ideas, and so Sylvia and I wrote some songs, and and uh, yeah, it, it it had its it had a unique sound, and it really uh, it really was exciting, but the the uh, our fans d- couldn't didn't get it. I mean, totally didn't get it. So, mm. so that was that was a problem right there. That's a shame. I have actually in the past interviewed both Amos and and Buddy, and they both look back on that time as a, a very special period. Oh, is that right? Well, that's great. Yeah. Has Buddy been down to uh, Australia? Not in recent years. No, no. But uh, uh-huh. yeah, you, with that group, you you took part in Festival Express, that uh, cross Canada uh, train experience. Ha- have vivid your memories of that? I don't have any memories of it. Really? I think I was drunk. Though. I was drunk the whole time. <laughs> I was I was keep trying to. I think I was trying to keep up with Janis Joplin, and that was uh, I was overmatched. Uh. <laughs> You've had a, a wonderful knack over the years of, of finding great musicians to play with. Uh, what do you look for specifically in a musician when, when choosing people to play with? Well, commitment really, I think, is is the main thing, John. You got to have commitment, and I mean, you know, you can find some really, really talented people, but if they're, you know, they don't they don't have that focus and they're flaky. Why, you know, you can't really get anywhere. But. Uh, uh, yeah, I've I've been lucky. I've been lucky in finding good good players, and and uh, and um, it's especially in, in the latter years, it's been great. I don't know if you've heard. Uh, there's a tribute album out of my songs called The Gift, and it's been out for a couple of months. Oh, yeah, on Stony Plain. It's Plan. a great album. Yeah, I'm sorry. On Stony Plain Records, isn't it? Through Sto- Stony. I can't hear you. It was through Stony Plain Records. That that tribute, yes. yeah, yeah, Stony Plain, and it's doing very well. And uh, there's, you know, there's just some wonderful musicians on there, and and uh, they uh, they do really they take take my songs in, in different directions, and uh, and uh, I, I I just love it. And um, but it's been good, you know. There's always been uh, I've always seemed to be able to find uh, the kind of players that I need for for. Uh, for the kind of music I'm playing, you know, and and, and, and writing at the time. You had a, a period away from music in the in the late seventies. Looking back now, do you think that was a break you needed to have to to get to where you are now with your music? 
Yes, I do, actually. I do. I, I've uh, uh, for horses and, and uh, horses, uh, have, uh, cow horses have always been a very big part of my life. And, and uh, at that time, I was... I was I was very involved. I had a young a young stallion that was very uh, talented and promising, and and I was uh, training cutting horses, and uh, which is which is a uh, which is an industry I, I might add that's been completely taken over in the United States by Australians. <laughs> I don't know if you know that, but completely. I mean, yeah. they dominate the whole thing. I th- and uh, but at, so I I wanted to concentrate on that. I was. A little, Kind of tired of, of the, the the music thing was I wasn't getting anywhere at the time and so I went uh, basically was a cowboy for uh, for a few years and uh, uh, three or four years and and then uh, went back to uh, to doing some some performing and and uh, at that time Neil Young uh, Neil Young cut uh, four strong ways and he's you know he's he's a giant here in in both the United States and Canada and that uh, you know that kind of inspired me you know it, it, finan- it was a big financial boost for me too and inspired me and I started writing uh, I wanted to write songs about the contemporary West the modern West because there was a big cowboy renaissance going on at the time you know and which the you know which the outside world was not aware of but it was a very exciting time for for cowboys and people that wanted to be cowboys and cowgirls and uh, uh, it was exciting and, and uh, so I was writing in that vein and uh, and then Elko Elko happened and uh, that changed uh, well it changed everything pretty much John can you hold on for a sec while I go and check this I got some chili on the stove and oh, I don't sure. want it to burn up no problem can you hold on for a sec yeah absolutely there in time <laughs> starting to, to burn in the pot oh so. no we don't want that to happen <laughs> no no so I guess you would say since, since it's, the start of, it's the start of winter here now just the last couple of days boy it was cold to that uh, I was working outside and it was it was cold uh, so I can look forward to six months of it now we're just starting a very hot summer here at the moment we're in the middle of a drought too which is terrible I've heard that you. I, I heard you've got a, a dreadful drought down yeah, there. Really, really. Bad. I hope. I hope you get some rain. It sounds. It sounds pretty serious. Yeah, it is. We're actually. It's raining outside as I speak, so that's a good sign. Hopefully, it'll continue. Now, I guess. Yeah, I hope so. I guess since you've returned to music, uh, would it be safe to say you, you've conducted your career more on more so on your own terms than than previously? Well, yeah, I guess so, but I, I have kind of always, uh, pretty well always conducted in my, you know, I always played my own cards, you know, pretty much. You know, I would defer, I would def- defer to Sylvia when, back in the old days when I worked with her, because, she, and uh, she's a lovely, lovely lady, and, and we're still, you know, we have a son, and who's, who's, uh, 40, 41 years old now, and and uh, I would defer to her, and we're, we're good friends. And but you know, I uh, it was uh, I was too much I was too much cowboy to be back east all the time. So I wanted to uh, return to the west, and and you know when I did, then this whole this whole uh, uh, you know Pandora's box of western music came flowing out of me, and. And uh, when Elko happened, uh, you know, it it uh, it made it possible. I had a whole new career, a whole very exciting new career. So, you know, that doesn't happen that often. You know, I was in in my forties when that happened, and uh, and uh, I was, uh, you know, I was kind of pretty charismatic to those people because they hadn't heard any. Even the, the ranch people in Nevada, in, you know, in the Southwest, they hadn't heard new Western music for a long time, you know. And here, here I came with this with this new stuff, and they just, you know, they just couldn't get enough of it. So it was, it was good for me because I could realize I could push the envelope writing. I could really push it, push it out there, and 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 did, and wrote some pretty far out stuff, and and. Uh, 
which I knew that you know the general public might not get it, but the the, the cowboys and the, the you know the buckaroos they would, and they mm-hmm. and they did. Tell us about your ranch there in, in your home in Alberta. It seems like a special place to be, and obviously has a, a great influence on on the music you're making. Yes, it does, and and uh, it's right on the edge of the Rocky Mountains, and if you uh, if you go out my back door, you you. You'd, you'd look east onto the endless prairie, which is flat, you know, and you'd, you'd, uh, you know, you could be in, uh, I don't know, Alice Springs or something. I mean, yeah. it, is Alice Springs flat? Probably is. It is definitely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you go out my front door to the west, there's, there's the, the Rockies, the, the shining, the Indian, old time Indians used to call it the shining mountains mm-hmm. because the. When the sun hits the new fresh snow like today, it, they do. They shine. They glisten, and and they're it's, they're very dramatic and very uh, you know very beautiful. Very you know it's a charismatic kind of a thing. And uh, so you know, and it's uh, uh, we're losing it. I mean, you know, we're losing our our big open spaces because they're you know, it's filling up with people and development. It's happening everywhere in North America, and it's. Uh, I find it very sad, and but uh, people say it's progress, and I say it's, that's not progress. It's it's change, and change is change, but it ain't progress. And mm. but you know we're still kind of trying to hang on to the old ways, you know, and uh, and uh, it's uh, I still do train cutting horses, and uh, and going uh, I'm going down to watch uh, next. Next week, I'm going down to Texas to watch the big security and watch all, all the Australians uh, dominating the, <laughs> the sport. <laughs> and uh, it's really amazing how they've, uh, I don't know, a couple of them came over way back, you know, 20 years ago and started, and then it, then they brought, brought a couple more and a couple more, and suddenly, uh, suddenly that it was it was their game, you know. Mm. So, uh, but we, we still, uh, we, we still, uh, dominate the hockey I guess so that, yeah, yes. that's good <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah you know it's uh, it's hard to talk about my my uh, my career and my songwriting because uh, I've been around so long you know and and uh, uh, I kind I'd like to be the last one standing actually but uh, I may or may not but uh, you know the horses still. You know I still have to share my life with with the horses and the, and the, the cowboy deal. You know and and, and uh, uh, it's I am and I am a cowboy, which is kind of unusual in this day and age. I mean I'm a real. You know I could uh, I could earn my pay uh, doing that, but uh, at my age I, I don't want to. And uh, it's. Uh, so you know, I, I'm pretty happy with it. I had, uh, I had, uh, I got sick last year and had some had some serious serious focal problems, but they've uh, kind of uh, worked their worked their way through and, and ironed themselves out. And I, I kind of got a kind of a whole new singing style, which is kind of which is kind of fun, you know. And people don't they people seem to think it's okay, uh, and. Uh, you know, it's uh, I'm still selling tickets, so I'm pretty grateful for all, for all of that. Is, is, and that's is what I'm trying to say, John. Yeah, sure. When when you perform live these days, are you able are you able to um, keep a happy balance of uh, of old material to keep your your old fans happy and and keep yourself happy in terms of being able to present new material to an audience as well? Have you got a nice balance happening there? <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's yes, that's that's exactly what we do, and you know, I I make sure that uh, you know I I'll, I usually I try to make sure I do someday soon, and and of course four strong runs I'll do, uh, but uh, if it's a really uh, you know if it's a really uh, into it kind of crowd, you know, a cowboy type crowd, I'll, I might not even do a song. I might just do all kind of new stuff, you know. Uh, but it, but the old stuff is always there, and and we can do it, and and we we can do it do it uh, well, and with with uh, with uh, uh, make it authentic, you know, and and 
Uh, yeah, it, I, I, but I never do the same thing. Uh, I never do the same show twice. I, I just can't. I can't do that. I, uh, I just uh, we make up a rough rough list, and uh, uh, unless it's of course a, a, a symphony show, and then then you know if you get a you know if you're lucky enough to play with one of these great symphonies like Calgary, you, know, you stick to the stick to the list. Yeah. But uh, but when we play live, I, I, I'm I'm could change at any time and then uh, we've got a, a large uh, you know there's a large repertoire to draw from so I kind of just go with the vibe you know the vibe of, of the evening now you mentioned just your son Clay he's also a professional musician he's not too well known to us down here in Australia tell us about uh, about his work well Clay's out of the music business now oh is he really uh, he beg your pardon is, I didn't I wasn't aware of that ah yeah, he's he's been out of the music business for oh, five five or more years, and, and he's got a his own business. He's a um, he's a uh, uh, bicycle, uh, uh, you know, mountain bike uh, type racer uh, racer, and he has a business of customizing uh, bicycles and, and racing bikes and stuff. And he's he's good at it, and he's very happy. And and uh, uh, you know, I think he you know he he ran into the famous parent syndrome uh-huh. which is pretty tough you know and being in Toronto he lives in Toronto which is you know the big big fast Canadian city I guess it's uh, I don't know what what it would compare to in Australia I guess probably Sydney I suppose mm-hmm. but you know it prides itself on being a big fast fast uh, city and uh, kind of tough tough city to um, you know make your make your mark and uh, he just you know, he wasn't happy doing that, and and uh, he tried for a long time. Had had a certain amount of success, and and uh, but I think he's uh, he's doing this other thing now. He's he's a happy guy, you know. And I know it's uh, it's uh, it's a, you know it's a lot a lot more fun to hang out with him now because <laughs> you know he doesn't have that music thing uh, pushing on him, you know, shoving him all the time. Yeah, and uh, his mom is still. Uh, you know, she's still performing, uh, not 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 as much as I do, but she's she's with a, a, a group, a wonderful singing group called uh, Quartet, four ladies, and they uh, they sing uh, beautifully, beautiful in tune and beautiful harmonies. And so, uh, you know, it's uh, they're in Toronto, and I'm I'm out here in the you know the last of the last of the West. <laughs> And just before I let you go, Ian, what, what, uh, what's coming up in, in terms of music for you? Uh, what, what are the upcoming plans? Well, I'm going, uh, me and my guys, you know, I have a trio. Uh, it's called Gord and Gord. That's their names. And um, we've been together now for uh, uh, over eight years, going on nine years. And we're pretty tight. We sound pretty good. And we're going to, the Elko this year is, is a, uh, is their, is their 20, uh, 25th anniversary, you know, it's going to be a big deal, and uh, it's a big gathering, and it's now the uh, the national, you know, the United States National Cowboy Poetry Gathering, so uh, and they're, you know, I'm, they're going to give me some quite a bit of recognition there this year, which is kind of nice, because uh, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a lobbyist, uh, I never have been, and, and uh, consequently I, uh, you know, I may, I may, uh, they're going to give me they feel that I should get some recognition this year, and uh, uh, and so that'll that'll be fun. I, I'm still selling, I still sell more more tickets than anybody else, so so I guess I'm doing something right, and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I got some new songs, and I'm, I'd like to uh, I'd like to do an album, uh, another album. Um, it's uh, you know again, it's going to confuse confuse the fans because it's it's going to be uh, again different and uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's about love and loss and uh, and uh, and love again and then all that kind of stuff and not not uh, not what you would think of a straight cowboy you know but uh, the funny thing is, you know, when I do these uh, these jazz, these more jazz influenced, far far out, 
just sort of introspective kind of songs. That it's the cowboys that always like them. <laughs> they're you know they're such uh, they're such independent people. That's okay. why I lo- why I love them. <laughs> Fantastic. Ian, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to catch up with you. I better let you get back to that pot of chili. Well, it's nice to talk to you, John. And, I, I you know, I I keep saying I, I, I'd like to get to Australia. We've been working on it for a lot of years. And, you know, I've had a lot of invitations. And, and so uh, I hope I hope that soon we can do it. Uh, you'd, be, you'd be most welcome for sure. We'd love to see you. Thank you, John. Okay, thank you. Take care, Ian. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.